What's up, YouTubers? This is Lawrence Ryan coming to you live once again from the tunnel. This is the 10th installment of the Rebel Tunnel Vlog. And the reason I mention that is, as some of you may or may not know, but this channel is pretty much a zero budget operation. Uh, the channel is not monetized. There is absolutely no funding or help or support from YouTube whatsoever for these videos. Uh, the channel was monetized. Um, but that is no longer the case, and I'll talk about that in the next video. But suffice to say that if you have subscribed to this channel and are watching these videos, thank you very much. Um, if not, please do so and hit that bell for notifications. And hopefully, going forward, um, I can keep doing these videos. So COVID-19, as everybody knows, stands for Coronavirus Disease of 2019. But the underlying virus acronym is SARS-CoV-2. And what that stands for is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. And yes, that's very similar to the SARS virus that we all experienced in 2003, similar both in name and in genetic makeup. And everyone knows for a successful public health response, governmental authorities and medical authorities need to be giving us very clear messaging and guidance. And unfortunately, that has not been the case in the U.S., uh, from the point where they were saying that masks were not necessary and even as to the severity of the disease. Let me just say for the record, kids, this is a very, very severe and dangerous virus. I mean, it's 10 times as deadly as the flu. 10 times. And much more contagious. Much more contagious than the flu. And it has a contingent to it called asymptomatic transmission. I read about, which means you could infect thousands of people and never know you did it because you didn't know you had it. Asymptomatic. And I read yesterday that 239 scientists from 32 different countries around the world sent an open letter to the WHO, World Health Organization, stating that they need to let the world know that the virus is airborne, meaning that it goes beyond the droplets that go out six feet. It goes into particles that float in the air, and when somebody walks by, they can inhale it, and they can get infected. Very, very, very dangerous disease. And what's as disturbing is this kind of seeming ambivalence that exists about it. Like many states in the U.S. have tried to open their economies now, only to have to close down again, because people, since they've been in lockdown... Um, get this kind of what's been described as irrational exuberance and kind of act like nothing ever happened. You know, uh, a story about Los Angeles said that uh, as soon as they did their, you know, cautious reopening, they said that half a million people flooded the beaches and the bars. And on Monday, the following Monday, they reported the largest number of cases in a single day since the pandemic began. And the Washington Post said that uh, on July 2nd, even before the 4th of July holiday, July 2nd, the United States had the largest number of cases in a single day since the beginning of the pandemic. 55,200 plus cases in a single day on July 2nd. That's before the holiday. And the New York Times said the number of new cases is growing faster than ever worldwide, reaching over 100,000 cases per day. So where is this not happening? In places like New Zealand, their everyday count is zero new cases per day. Pretty much it's been that way for about a month. They may have had one or two from people that kind of got into the country and traveled in. But for the most part, they had stated that they had pretty much eradicated the pandemic in New Zealand. So what did they do? So I read this article, which I'll put a link to down below, about a German man who was stuck in New Zealand during the lockdown. And in that article, he described what they did, which was pretty much what we did. You know, with the exception of the mask delay that we had. Uh, first of all, they basically stopped all traffic in and out of the country. They closed down all non-essential businesses. They gave guidance to restrict travel to just trips for food and for medical supplies. 
That's pretty much what the United States did. So why does New Zealand have zero new cases per day for the most part? And the United States has 50 to 55,000 new cases per day. Well, they actually followed the protocols. The New Zealanders or the Kiwis, as they're known as, are very, very disciplined in that way, apparently. Now, we as Americans have the tenacity. We have the capacity. We just need to learn the patience to do this. And we can do this. There's a really, really interesting Netflix program on COVID-19 with a lot of good information on it. And I'll put a link to it down below if I can. Uh, and in that program, they talk about herd immunity. And I know some of you have heard about this. But herd immunity, in a nutshell, basically means that if you have immunized enough people to a virus or a disease, then the virus has less of an opportunity to infect as many people, which allows us to get it under control and even possibly to eradicate it. So that's called herd immunity. Now, the thing is that that involves a vaccine, which we do not have yet and probably will not have for several years. But why couldn't we do the same thing without a vaccine? Sort of an avoidance immunity, if you will. So, for example, if you've got 10,000 people who've been immunized, okay, they no longer can give the disease to anybody. They can't transmit the disease, okay? The same thing applies if you have 10,000 people who've avoided getting the disease. They can't transmit the disease to anybody. So if enough people avoid getting the disease, then the transmission rate goes down. Avoidance immunity. Catchphrase might be, if you don't get it, you can't spread it. Simply put, and it's simple, but it seems like that's what happened in New Zealand. Enough people followed the protocols and they got their numbers down so that they have zero new cases a day. We can do the same thing. Wear your masks. If you have extra ones, take them with you. If you see somebody that doesn't have one, somebody you know, offer them one. Maybe you'll save a thousand lives doing that. Avoid crowds and gatherings of any size. I see venues now in July here that are offering entertainment and food with no mask requirement. If you see any venues that do not require masks, avoid them. Do not go to them and avoid people that have gone to them. Too many stories, folks, about people that went to a party, came home, had the disease, and are no longer with us. Too many stories about people that go somewhere or had somebody come from somewhere and the disease was transmitted. Too many stories, okay? And limit the travel to essential travel, like for food and medical reasons. If we just did that, we could dramatically reduce or eliminate new cases, just like they did in New Zealand. Take tremendous pressure off our healthcare system and protect our country until we can find a vaccine. So stay safe, be well, and God bless. Thank you.